four, three, two, one, go! That's going to stick with me all day. Someone's having a blast, not the usual sort of calm of Cape Canaveral. Uh, NASA adding to its long list of historic firsts today. This one's going on almost as far from Cape Canaveral as it gets. The first rocket launched from an Australian space center. There's more to the story than that headline alone. So we bring in Chris Ensing for us, who's following this. They are exuberant i don't know like the traditional <laughs> aussie exuberance over this it's a new chapter in their history and space history chris and it's a very significant moment yeah heather you can you can hear the sound of that excitement inside of that voice really encapsulates everything that australia was hoping with this launch uh, now as you mentioned this is the first time that nasa has launched commercially outside of the united states australia being the spot because of what they've been able to do inside of their northern territory there to really uh, pick up and build their space industry they believe that with this launch and what comes after it could launch a space industry that brings in about 12 billion dollars uh, to the economy by 2030 creating about 10,000 jobs uh, all of this as they try and set their sights on on really establishing this area which is good for those trying to get to space because of how it relates to the equator you essentially can ship more things into space heavier objects and it's easier to get there uh, now going about this whole process to this launch has been about 10 years in the making and it has involved the traditional people who own the traditional owners of the land the Yonglu people uh, there are some who who believed that this wouldn't have been a perfect embrace, that there were people who were worried that this might have been a, a, a situation where people were taking advantage of. But listening to a senior clan member talk about what this meant uh, for their community as they look at a mining town that is starting to fade away, they see this as potentially a future for a people who really are connected with the first, you know, first discovery of how space can impact uh, the world. Have a listen to what this may be for their future. But Seeing that we um, have talked to AIL and NASA about uh, the rocket or the space center here, it, yep. it brings that, um, you know, the, especially about the town, if it is to fade away or die, yep. we have hopes that it will stay alive. And a big part of this, again, is just the location of where they are. The weather is supposed to be a benefiting factor here, but it did delay the launch a little bit. Everything went smoothly according to plan, though, Heather. So, uh, really interesting start. Tell us more, though, Chris, about the mission itself. Yeah, that's the big part of this, too. That rocket goes up into space. It actually didn't stay up there for long. It was about a 15-minute trip up and down back to the same place that it took off from. Uh, it was taken essentially x-rays of uh, certain parts of well, the space, the solar system, and trying to figure out how galaxies expand. They're going to take that data, bring it back. It's actually going to go to the University of Michigan, where students are going to study it and see what they can find out. Uh, there's three missions in total that are planned. The second one will have happened on July 4th and it has scientists peaked their interest looking at trying to figure out if there's a possibility of finding yes another planet that people could habitat now that's part of what they're trying to figure out they're also looking at some of the ways of how stars align and and how again the the galaxies start to expand but a lot of this effort a lot of this the, the attention that's being paid on it are sort of that landmark idea of what this means again for NASA as it sees that commercial launch take place outside of the United States and what it could mean for the space industry as a whole across the world Heather Chris thank you very much